appreciate your effort on on the effort of uh, solving this problem dealing with with retirement. Uh, you know, I, I am a strong advocate for policies that help Americans provide for their retirement for themselves and for their families. Uh, and, and we've talked a lot about different issues and different assumptions that have gone into this. And, you know, as has been referenced before, a lot of these pensions were were knocked on their heels uh, because of the, the Great Recession in 2008. But I served as the the trustee as the state treasurer of Kansas. I was a trustee for our public employee pension system. And I know that good management can react to those problems because that's what we had to do. And we had to take the effort to solve that. We put money in, in terms of cost and contributions in order to make sure that it was addressed. And it wasn't relying on uh, the taxes that, that uh, people that aren't participants in the plan had to deal with. But I'm really concerned now as we're looking at, it's becoming pretty clear that this $1.9 trillion COVID package is, is a lot of rehash of some democratic partisan divisive priorities over the past two years. Instead of a targeted, timely package designed to crush the virus and open the economy, which will help all Americans. You know, among the many policies and provisions that have been talked hushed in this shopping, shopping cart uh, deal with this retirement and this pension issue. But here we're talking about selected pension plans, particularly ones that deal with union pensions, which are almost identical to the policies and the program that the committee heard in July of 2019 and for the failed newspapers, which I remember our committee focused on addressing in the SECURE Act. So what's being sold as relief is, is in reality just some retreaded wish list of items that uh, maybe oh, yeah, are that. trying to be sold as, as COVID relief. The provisions in this subsection make taxpayers foot the bill for these massive unsolved, insolvent pension plans that are underfunded, not because of COVID, but because of decades of mismanagement, usually by the trustees. Again, I want to emphasize that these provisions will not get our economy going again or help Americans who are out of work find a job. Same holds true with the small newspapers. As a committee, we came to agreement on this issue in December of 2019 through the SECURE Act. I'm appalled that the same issue is being raised now less than two years after members on this side of the aisle were guaranteed that this issue was taken care of. Government shouldn't be in the business of picking winners and losers. And I'm disappointed that my colleagues would think subsidizing failed newspapers under the guise of COVID-19 relief is good stewardship of taxpayer dollars. I'm particularly concerned that we don't know the ultimate cost of this bailout and that multi-employer plans will ha not have similar contribution and assumption requirements that single employer plans have. And even after this payout occurs, I believe we're still going to have to come back and address the ongoing issue with the PBGC, which is another indication that this is not the right solution for our pension problem. The American people don't need more government regulations. They don't need more job crushing mandates or special interest bailouts. They want to get their job back. They want to get their businesses open and they want to reopen their schools. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back the remainder of my time. I thank the gentleman.